Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 369. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 358 to 369. Hey, in this trick, we have our data set right here. We have this other data set right here, and this has these records, we are only interested in the records that are here that are not here. So I've highlighted them. We need to extract those records. Now, this, there's a few different ways to do this. This is going to be with a formula. Now, the first thing we need to do is I want to look at what the uh, match function does when it looks in a range. I want to see, say, hey, match, look at this, and is it here? I want to see what happens. So I'm going to come here. And I also want to, since we're extracting two records, I don't want to have to add an extra column to each one to create a unique identifier, which would combine these two. Other videos, I put an extra column here, and I join this and this to create a unique identifier. I want to actually do that right in our formula. So, so let's do it right here, equals match. And I'm going to join that one ampersand shift 7 this one. That means um, if we highlight this like this and hit the F9 key, what does it give us? Not the actual formatted numbers, but the unformatted numbers. There is the date, the serial date, and there's the number. Now control Z on that. We also need to for our, our lookup array, join the table. So we shift 7 for ampersand to join that and that. You can see if we were to highlight this and hit the F9 key, it just gives us a whole table of them. Control Z. Now it'll compare this one, which is not there, comma, and we have to use exact. If uh, we didn't, um, this would be matched up with this one. It would, uh, because using the number one other than a match type, it finds values in between. We need an exact match, so we put zero. Let's uh, close parentheses. Now, this is an array. Uh, well, if we control enter, what happens? We get value, so I'm going to hit F2. Control shift enter. Not available. So that is going to be the whole conceptual trick to this, is we're going to build a, a match like that. And in any time it says not available, that'll be our trigger. That tells us, oh, that thing needs to be extract. Now, how do we convert not available to a true? No problem. We use the is NA. No way. Checks to see whether the value is NA. So this is a true false. The is NA only delivers true or false. So when I um, control shift enter, it says true. So let's go ahead and use that idea of match concatenation and is NA. First, we're going to count how many unique records and then we're going to extract them. We will use some product. Some product would be great because it'll uh, deal with the array. And we're going to use a double negative to convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros. Is an A match. I got a Mac. I got a match there. Now, the lookup value is not going to be an individual cell. It's just going to be just as we did our table. All of these, please look at all of those ampersand and all of these, so the first column and the second column joined together. That's the lookup value. Because remember, we have to say, are these in this? So comma, that's why this table is the lookup array. Same thing here. Actually, I'm going to hit the F4 key, because uh, we're going to use this later. And I don't want to have to recreate it. So we, I'm going to hit the F4 key again. Now I'm going to come up here and hit F4. We need to lock all of these in all directions. All right, so what have we done? The, uh, this, the lookup value is these two columns. The lookup array are these two columns, and I locked it. Now, comma, 0, exact match. Close parentheses on the match. Close parentheses on the is and a. We have a double negative in front of the is and a, which will work just fine because we have a green and green parentheses there. And then finally, a, a close parenthesis for the sum product and enter. So it gives us 6. Now, that'll be our trigger. When we create a formula, we're going to copy it down. And the formula needs to be turned off when it gets past 6 records. Here we go, equals if. 
And how are we going to turn it on and off? With a logical test. Now we'll use our uh, a number incrementer that we, that we use inside of formulas. We're going down across the row, so we're going to use the rows function. I'm sitting in G5, so G dollar sign 5, because we want a lock going down but not to the side, colon G5. Now many of you have seen this many times. Um, why do I only put one dollar sign there? Well, because when we copy it over here, uh, that G will turn to an H, but it doesn't matter because we're only concerned about rows. And when you get over here, if it says H5 to G5, notice that's two cells. If you had a huge data set, that's a lot of ex extra cells that the formula has to look through and calculate, um, calculation time and all that kind of stuff. Hey, we got to say the number of rows. This would be 1, 2, 3 as we copy it down. Is that less than or equal to this one? And that one needs to be locked in all directions, so I'll hit the F4. Comma. Now, our value if true, that is going to be our index. That's the lookup function we will use to look up our records and extract them. Now, we have one and two columns. So we're really just going to want to look through this whole first column. But the trick is to hit the F4 once and twice. Locked in front of the row, so when we copy it down, it's, it's locked on that. But when we copy it over to the second field, boom, the column reference A is not locked, so it'll jump to B. Comma. Now the row number. The index needs a row number. And which row numbers uh, does it need? 1, 2, 3. 5, 6, 10, 11. Now, we have a bunch of um, different row numbers that we're going to plop into the index, but we're going to use the small function to select one of them at a time. So the small selection, as we copy it down, will first select row 2, then 3 when it gets to the next row, then 5. So we're going to use small. The array. We're going to use that big, huge array of trues and falses. In fact, you know what? I don't think I copied this. I'm going to put my um, cursor right there in space to temporarily suspend that formula. I'm going to come up here, highlight everything that is an A. Copy. That's why we locked it. Because that's going to be our true, false, our, our trip to give us trues and falses whether to uh, get a row number. Now the array, we're going to have to say if, and now we our logical test for all of our row numbers, we're going to control V. That's paste. Now if you don't believe, remember we, we need a um, true, true, false, true, true, etc. If you were to highlight all of just the is and a and hit F9, you can see false, true, true and then false for that one, and then true, true. So we've established a true, false pattern, control Z. And what is it from the true and false that we want? Because remember, this whole small thing is just dumping a row number into index, comma. The value, if true, is going to be row. So we highlight all of these rows using the row function, and I'm going to have to hit F4. Now, think about that. Right now, it would give us. 4, 5, 6, all the way to 14. We don't want that, so we're going to say minus row of this, and that is cell B4. So B4 minus 4 minus 4 is 0. We don't want that. We want um, 1, so we add 1. Those will be, if we highlight this and hit F9, you can see that that is exactly what we want. So the true from the first part of the if, or that is in a match, false true. So the first thing it will uh, small will get is a 2 for, for row number to go into index. Control Z. Now we um, read our screen tips. And uh, the value of true is all we need, so we close parentheses. And then the small says, hey, please give me an incrementer. The first smallest row number, second, etc. So I'm just going to copy this. Comma row no, uh, k and then close parentheses on the small. The index says, "Hey, I, you gave me the row number," so I close parentheses on that. Finally, the if says that's the value of true. We hit comma because we want a false, which is double quote for blank. Close parentheses. Control Shift and Enter because this is an array formula. Now I copy it over one, and I immediately don't like that formula, so I'm going to Control Shift four to apply currency. Control Shift four, and then I'm going to drag these down.
And sure enough, that works beautifully. That extracts the records that are in this table that are not in this table. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.